be enjoying life. Huh? Uh, you, you know, if, if, if these little kids, uh, whenever they came out here bringing out these little boxes, uh, if, if they could bring you a little box of hope, wouldn't it be wonderful to have hope the way Democrats, Republicans, Communists, and Socialists are growing up in our country? Yeah. Wouldn't it be wonderful to have hope for the future? Yes. Well, well, don't you wish somebody could bring you a, a box uh, uh, that you could open <laughs> up uh, and, and, and it said, uh, Peace, be still. The gift of God. It's without cost. It's without price. Uh, it, 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 it's what they said in the conclusion of this program up here this morning. Uh, it, it's just giving yourself. Because when you give yourself unto him, uh, he's not going to rob you. He's not going to steal from you. He's not going to take from you. Uh, he's going to fill you uh, with joy and peace and love uh, and understanding. He's going to allow you to know that your life has a meaning and it has a purpose. That you're not here for nothing. You, you, you're not here whether it's, uh, it's long life or short life. Uh, you're not here for naught. Uh, you're here not so you can become uh, a celebrity on television passing out millions of dollars uh, but don't have the capability of relating one another. It is so that you can receive uh, and give uh, love and tenderness and understanding. What did it say whenever he said if you want to come to the altar and pray? Forgiveness. Hallelujah. Think about it, Christmas time. You know that there will be more people locked up from last week until the first week of 2010. There'll be more abuse, more suicide, more drug overdoses, more people in the emergency room. Why? Because this is the time of trying to decide is it Fantasy? Is it fable? Or is it real? <coughs> is it fantasy? Is it fable? Or is it real? The Bible said, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son. Matthew 1, 18 to 25. I'm not going to take time to read these scriptures. Matthew 1, 18 to 25. That the birth of Jesus was on this wise. The birth of Jesus was on this wise. A virgin conceived and gave birth to man child. Glory to God. And this baby that was born. Amen. Was given a <laughs> name. And the Bible said in Matthew 1 23, they called his name Jesus. Second Corinthians, the fifth chapter, and the 19th verse. Second Corinthians, the fifth chapter, and the 19th verse. Now, we can look at it as fable, or we can look at it as a gift of God. To wit that God was in Christ. Joy to the world. Not, not because we're having Christmas time, but because we understand something. We understand that God loves us. Amen. I mean, we understand God loves us. Glory to God. My Kids never did uh, uh, know which one we loved the best, you know. One of them asked me, one of mine, I don't like any of them. Let be equal about it. Hello, glory to God. You love one more than you love the other. Not a lot love any of them. God loves us unconditionally. He didn't love us because uh, 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 of us coming and they have having talent. Or that. He, he loves us unconditionally. Think about it, for God was in Christ. God loved us. He didn't understand us. He said, the only way that I'm going to understand is to walk in their true leather. Because God's the Spirit. Now think about it. That no wonder people uh, come up with Santa Clauses and 
Uh, isn't, that, isn't that not wrong with Santa Claus? I've been to the North Pole up there sitting on a bench. Uh, I told you last week, I believe it was, a pickup came up uh, uh, with an old camp of shelves. So three kids get out, big old fat guy, and his old lady come get out with a bunch of kids. Uh, and one of them starts running over, I'm sitting on the bench. One starts running over, going to grab me up, said, That's Santa Claus! Uh, and his mama said, That's not Santa, or daddy said, That's not Santa Claus, that's his brother. No, no, I mean, as long as you are able to separate fable. Huh? My wife bought a CD in, over at Costco somewhere. Uh, Justin, I don't think she got it from you, but anyway, it, it's called Christmas Angel. And, uh, I mean, it starts off slow and gets slower for two hours. <laughs> Talk about this guy that made millions of dollars becomes a cripple and decides that he wants to give his fortune away as an invisible Santa Claus. He's dying and he finds someone to take his place. I'm not talking about Santa Claus this morning. I'm talking about the reality. I'm talking about one that can change your life. I'm talking about one that can change your behavior. I'm talking about one that can give you hope. I'm talking about one that can take the distress out of your heart, can take the fear out of your mind, and give you some stability and put your feet on a solid rock so that you can know that you can go through life with a purpose. I've been interviewed this past week. And they asked me, said, what do you regret in life? I looked at my wife, no, I, I don't know. What do you regret in life? I had to think about it. I made a lot of mistakes. I got an old Tiger Woods that looked like an angel according to some of the stuff. Richard Roberts uh, would look like an angel some of the stuff I've done in my lifetime. Uh, amen. Uh, Robert Shuler's a uh, junior look, uh, I mean, I'm a sinner. <laughs> A sinner, amen, that, that was perishing, rescue the perishing. When I was 14 years of age, I had an opportunity of living a lot of years up in Huntsville. I didn't go there. When I was 17, I went into the service. Amen, I was perishing. They asked me, so what, what, what do you regret in life? And I actually, honestly, I only could come up with one thing. I went to AWL. I didn't actually go to AWL. Uh, we were having a parade up, uh, and when I was going to civilian college, while I was in the service up Blairville, Pennsylvania, I led a parade down Liberty Avenue uh, on uh, uh, Labor Day. Went back, and we went to a bar. <laughs> And we sat there, and I was the flight chief, had 125 under me, and, and I thought uh, uh, we were setting up at a bar at Holiday, and I thought the commanding officer and the first sergeant uh, 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 was gone, and uh, we uh, had someone come running in the bar and said, uh, first sergeant's up, we was a, a barracking at the American Legion home, and uh, said the first sergeant coming in for bench. We hot footed up about eight blocks uh, from that bar and got up there and I went in the back door of the armory building. I take my wife up there and show it to her. And I went in the back door of that armory building and I grabbed my clothes off real quick because we had put on civilian clothes. I grabbed them off from over and I ruffled my hair up, crawled up uh, and got in bed. Uh, and and uh, the first sergeant went over at the other side and I got up out of my bed and I went wandering over. And, he said, I'm sorry, Montgomery, your bed was the first one I checked. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I wish I hadn't done that. A lot of foolish things that I've done. But, but see, I was perishing. I had no meaning, I had no purpose. I was perishing. 